Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are outsmarting smart shapes. We are going to start working with hairpins today. So let's just jump right into that. Uh, now I showed you in the first video how to draw them. It's just a question of selecting the tool, crescendo, and double clicking and holding and dragging to edit, right? <coughs> Uh, what's interesting, is, and I just learned this actually not too long ago, is that you can actually draw hairpins backwards or forwards. So if I were to actually start with the with the crescendo tool on the right side, double click, hold, and drag, I would get a decrescendo, which is interesting, and vice versa if I had the decrescendo tool selected and I draw from right to left, I would get a crescendo, all right? Now, obviously, with the meta tools, it doesn't matter which tool we have selected. In fact, we have a completely different tool selected. I could uh, hold down the left arrow or the right arrow, you know, to get the right uh, um, hairpin, right? But um, if you prefer to work like this, you know, this is another way to do it, is just select the crescendo tool, draw a crescendo from left to right, draw a decrescendo from right to left, and you can go about... Uh, you know, fairly quickly doing it like that as well, all right? So that's just an option for you if you want to do that. Now, once you have your hairpin in your score, you can start making adjustments. And very easily, just by selecting the main handle, uh, you can sort of drag it around, left, right, up or down, whatever you need to do to put it into place. When you select the handle, you'll get three other smaller handles, which will allow us to make some other adjustments. There's one on each end. Uh, the pointy end, the open end, and there's one just inside the open end, right? So that, that, that third handle right there. And the one towards the pointy end, in this case the left side, will do a couple things. If you drag it left or right, it will uh, shorten or lengthen the hairpin. If you drag it up or down, it will move the entire hairpin up or down. And the one on the right, or actually the, I should say the one at the opening, will also allow you to extend or shorten the hairpin. But this one will not allow you to move the hairpin up or down, and there's a reason for that, and I'll show you that in a minute. All right. And then finally, this third one, which is just inside the opening, this is the aperture adjustment. And if you grab that and move up or down, you can open or close the end of the hairpin uh, as much as, as little as you need to. All right. So that's what that would do. Let me just redraw this one more time. Um, interestingly, actually, one more time. Interestingly, if you have snap when attaching to beats selected, we know that when you start drawing a hairpin, it will, you know, it will snap to each note um, and line up perfectly with that note or the end of the bar line. However, once you've finished drawing it uh, and you start using these end handles to extend or shorten it, it will stop snapping. So you can make fine tune adjustments after the fact. The, the snapping will only affect when you first enter the hairpin. All right, so that's just how that works. And finally, I mentioned that uh, you can't move up or down with this uh, adjustment handle at the opening of the hairpin. The reason for that is because hairpins are drawn uh, horizontally by default, and so it will not allow you to change the angle unless we choose to undo that horizontal nature of it. And we can do that by right-clicking the main handle to get the contextual menu, and towards the bottom here, there's an option that says Make Horizontal, and it is checked. If we uncheck that, <coughs> we can now use that uh, handle towards the opening of the hairpin and drag up or down to create an angle on that hairpin, all right? So that's how that would work. Otherwise, if that Make Horizontal is selected, <coughs> it's basically um, repressing you from changing the angle with that particular uh, uh, adjustment handle. All right, so that's how that works. And there's another option relating to uh, horizontal and angled ho um, uh, hairpins that I'm going to show you. I'm going to draw another one in this guitar part between bars four and five here. And in this case, I'm going to uncheck make horizontal, and I'm going to create a little bit of an angled hairpin here, just to show you something. Now, in the score, this is fine. It looks j just perfectly normal, or I guess normal, depending on if that's what you want to see. But if we were to go to the guitar part, let me just show you what happens here. That hairpin got uh, drawn across the system, so bars four and five right here. Let me just zoom in, and you'll see. And what you'll notice is that the hairpin is horizontal anyway. W you saw me uh, set it so that it's not horizontal, horizontal, and actually if I right-click, you'll see that it's still unchecked. However, the, the it's still horizontal, right? 
That's because of right above that uh, make horizontal, there's two options here uh, called make horizontal over system break and maintain angle over system break. By default, the first one is selected regardless of whether make horizontal is selected or not. So you could have a angled, um, an angled hairpin in the score and a horizontal hairpin in the part in this way. All right. So if we instead choose the other option, maintain angle over system break on this, you'll notice that now that hairpin will take on the angle from the score across the system. Right. And interestingly, when a hairpin crosses a system like this, we can actually uh, make adjustments to each individual side of it. So if I were to, you know, grab this one, I could, you know, change the angle a little bit of this one, then go down here, make this one a little bit lower, you know, make it make the angle a little bit less. So we can have a lot of control over what happens with the angles and everything in that regard. And interestingly, if we were to recheck make horizontal over system break, sometimes you have to redraw make horizontal over system break and choose make horizontal you'll see that uh, it would um, it would all go back to horizontal all right so that is the across system break option for horizontal or not hairpins now another thing to know about hairpins is that if you make adjustments particularly with a horizontal let's say we're going to do this again here make this uh, hairpin go wacky all kinds of places right um, and there we go. Uh, there is no reset for your hairpin. You know, if you right click on a hairpin, you'll still get the contextual menu that will give you the option for remove manual slur adjustment. Obviously, this is not a slur, so checking that is going to have no effect. There is no um, make remove manual um, hairpin adjustment, right? Uh, the only option we have is to recheck make horizontal, and that will re uh, send it back to horizontal, all right? And finally, there is one feature that's, uh, that, that uh, is available with Smart Shapes that I think is uh, particularly pertinent to hairpins that I want to show you. So let me go over to the end of my score to show you something here. So I've got these hairpins in the second to last measure, and you notice that they're all different lengths, and uh, it doesn't exactly look quite right. There is an option in the contextual menu here, uh, about in the center, for aligning horizontally and aligning vertically, right? Now, if in this case, if I have just this one hairpin selected and I choose align vertically, nothing's going to happen because Finale doesn't know what to align it vertically to. However, if you select a bunch of hairpins, you can just kind of lasso select them. So I've selected all was that, seven of them. Then I can uh, right click one of them, and whichever one you right click, that the other ones are going to align to that one. So if I want them to align to the second one here right click on the second one and choose align vertically and you'll see magically all of those hairpins will get in line vertically with that one I selected right if I were to do that again and choose this longer one and choose align vertically you'll see that they all become uh, a little bit longer right uh, so that's a, a really handy thing to know how to do is just lasso it lasso them all select the one that you, you like the length of right click align vertically and this is a really quick way to you know make your scores look pretty and, and have all of your uh, hairpins line up right so that's the vertical alignment we can also do this horizontally which sometimes comes in handy uh, you know across systems for instruments or in this case in the piano part here I've got these two um, uh, hairpins that are not lined up so we just select the both of them and let's say I want to line it up to the first one so s right click the first one and choose align horizontally and that second one will get in line, all right? Now, the one thing you have to be careful about is that, particularly in uh, piano parts like this, is that the hairpins do have to be attached to the same staff. So you notice that both of these hairpins, you know, they have these uh, dashed lines that, that are indicating that they're connected to the top staff, right? Uh, check out the first one, though, which I entered in the bottom staff, right? You can see that it's attached to the bottom staff. So if I were to try to do the same thing and align horizontally, with the second uh, uh, hairpin right here. You'll see that these will get in line, but that other one will get all the way down here on the other side of the left-hand staff. The reason for that is because Finale is very dutifully aligning the position basically from the, the, the points that it's attached to. So in this case, this is attached to the bottom of the staff. So it's, it's saying, well, you must want this to align the same distance from the bottom of the staff that it's attached to, right? Which is not 
uh, going to be a good result. So you do have to be careful that they're all attached to the same staff. So in order to redo that, what you'd have to do is you know, create a hairpin that's attached to the proper staff. And it doesn't matter where it is. It's right there. Now we can select all three of those. Select all three and align horizontally. And they'll all get in line. All right. So that's a handy little thing that align horizontally and vertical. Uh, handy little feature. And it's really useful for hairpins. And uh, it'll, it'll make quick work of uh, cleaning up your scores sometimes using that. All right. So that is uh, working with hairpins. Hopefully this has helped. Uh, come back. We're going to start looking at some other elements in the smart shapes. And I'll show you how to work with those as well. So thanks for watching. And come back soon.